NBC Sports Radio, AM 1060, KDUS Tempe, Phoenix, and KSLX HD2 Scottsdale, Phoenix. You are listening to the Lance J Radio Network on NBC Sports. Imagine if this was the last words I ever wrote, the last words that I ever spoke. Nope, I'm going to keep serving them because there's somebody out there that's never even heard of them or the songs I've been murdering. Now it's a whole herd of men try to follow in his footsteps. I did it all to get a rep and it worked out. And now my sisters Kirk out when they hear me on the radio. Rock, rock, and you don't. Freak, freak, and you don't. To the beat, and you don't. Unique, and you don't. Think I will, but I won't stop. Think I will, but I won't stop. Rock, rock, and you don't. Freak, freak, and you don't. To the beat, and you don't. It's unique, and you don't. Think I will, but I won't stop. Think I will, but I won't stop. You're listening to the Paragon of Sports Talk Excellence. The Lance Day Radio Network coming to you live from NBC Sports Radio Studios in blistering hot 105 degrees <laughs> Phoenix, Arizona. I'm your host, the one and only James Lewis III, kicking a little bit of Little Brother. Now, Ray, I know that you're not really a, a, a East Coast hip hop head. Little Brother, I like that. Little Brother is an excellent group from North Carolina <laughs> that that put together a classic album called The Minstrel Show in the early 2000s, um, and they're one of my favorite groups. And the reason that I wanted to start the show with spitting some bars, I like to spit some bars here and there. Uh, yeah, but I wanted to that. start the show because yesterday, as I was watching LeBron James sink that off the backboard jumper against Toronto, I couldn't think of anything that personified someone being someone's little brother (laughs) more than what Toronto is to the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Buckeye State of Ohio. Thank you for joining us this Sunday night. We have a great show for you. You can hear my my partner in crime, Miss Ray Black, is back back. in the building. We have Jerobi from A Tribe Called Quest coming in. Uh, we have an array of callers. Uh, I'm going to get into it right now. So before I go in on LeBron and, and crowning him in his greatness or, or spit some more bars, whatever I feel like doing this week, <laughs> you've been gone the last couple of weeks, Ray, and yes. uh, you've had so much going on in your personal life. Now, you talked about a few weeks ago how you were preparing to run for Ms. Woman Arizona. Mm-hmm. I think that that's redundant because it's if you're a Ms., you're already a woman. Maybe it's a transgender thing. I don't want to get into that because that's not what our show is about. But why, are you, you, why is it Ms. and woman? Why I can is it tell both? you why. And this is what I found out. And this is a very interesting fact about pageants. So what I found out is that there is not a category for my age group. So I'm actually considered uh, old. So uh, there's a Miss, which is like the college girls, and then there's right. a Mrs. But they totally skip me and all of the women that are like me. See, that's not fair. Yeah. So this particular pageant, they had a in between age, and it so they call it a Ms. Woman. Got it. Like a grown up woman. That makes sense. Thank you for for educating yes. myself and and the listeners of our show. So how did you do before we get into the sports talk aspect of the show? How did you do? in the Ms. Woman Arizona pageant last week? So Ms. Mesa won the pageant. There was five of us total, and I feel like I did really good. I feel like I was competitive. I felt good. I looked good. I had a lot of compliments from the judges on my gown that I wore. I don't. Right. Did you see the pictures? I did. Okay, I did. yeah, I had a lot of compliments on that and on my walk, so I feel like I did good. I got up there. I was competitive. I represented my age group, and that's all I could do. I represented my platform as well, which is life after hair loss. So I feel I feel really good about it. I'm actually getting ready to compete again. Yeah. So you are you're still the the current reigning champion, Ms. Peoria. Peoria. Yes. So what is the what is the next stop on the beauty pageant and um, philanthropic work train for Miss Ray Black? So the next stop is. There's another pageant called Arizona International Pageants, and they, from watching our show, were inspired to create this category that is not that is very rare, this age category. They were inspired from our competition to create it in their competition, which is coming up May 19th. So I was invited to compete again in this brand new category that they just put in, like from watching our show last week. Wow. So I'm going to go for that. This would make history, basically, because I would be the first one to start off this, if I win this, start this category off for them. So I'm really excited about that and to represent other women in my age group as well. What goes into, before we get into sports, what goes into all of the work that's done 
as far as the hair and the nails and the makeup and the shoes and the outfits. I mean, you have to procure money. You have to get mm-hmm. a designer. You have to get yeah. a stylist. Um, yeah. What what goes into all of that? What goes into it? The the Ms. Woman category is more about business. So they want to know what you're doing with your life. What is your career doing? How's your family? And so they dig a little bit deeper. It's not just pretty and have a nice dress on. It's more like education and career, career, very career based, family based. So the hair and the makeup all goes into that, which you already know I got that down. And um, also, it's a interviewing process, which you get interviewed by a panel of judges. They ask you very specific questions about your career, about your platform, about your goals, how you're going to promote this platform of this pageant, how you're going to promote your own platform. They ask about family. So they all of these, the interview is the most important part, actually. So if you do really well in your interview, you do really well overall in the pageant. Well, it's great to have you back in the booth with me. While you are gone, you know, the funny thing is I feel that at times that I've gone away from the roots of this show. I was sitting here trying to break down game film as it was happening live Mm -hmm. and giving a recap of what happened over the weekend in sports. And as I was driving to the studio today, I was thinking, I was like, that's really not what this show is about. Right. I'm more into the lowest common denominator, sophomoric, saying offensive things to drive ratings up. That's really (laughs) more of the type of show that I was doing. So I thought, I said, we could start the show by talking about LeBron's dominance, of course, and, and that amazing shot that he hit and just how if you were an alien and came here from another dimension and you saw clips of LeBron James and you saw clips of Michael Jordan, I could see where someone could say, hey, these guys are equal or yeah. or that taller guy is – that taller, more muscular guy is even better. Mm. We could talk about Kanye West going ham in the news uh. and, and all of those things. We could talk about Golden State going up 3-1 and, and kind of the imminent collision course – in the NBA with Golden State in Houston and Boston in Cleveland. But I don't want to talk about that. Okay. Um, I want to talk about something that's near and dear to my heart. One of the first monologues that I did when I realized that I could do this show and do monologues, I did a monologue from the OU um, intramurals tournament for adults that they have at alumni. Mm-hmm. And I call it the full regalia monologue. And that was basically, I was there and watching people in our age group that are in their mid thirties or forties. Mm-hmm. They were out there, pot belly, out of shape, <laughs> um, tattoo sagging, all of that stuff, wearing a full basketball top and bottom. And I just said, this is not acceptable. <laughs> You're 40. You shouldn't be out here with a headband and a sleeve and all of that stuff. If you want to rock the t-shirt and a pair of shorts and go out there and run around, that's fine still play ball but you're dressed up and suited up like it's the seventh game in the nba finals <laughs> so i've spent a lot of time making fun of full regalia guy the person that plays sports that thinks that they're more important than they are i saw a full regalia violation recently and that's with lebron james and the aforementioned cleveland cavaliers mm-hmm. they've been wearing suits to the games they've been wearing (laughs) matching suits so if you've seen on instagram you've seen on facebook they're coming into the gym they're all wearing the same suit right uh they had a series of black suits they had a a silver suit with the matching vest but most importantly that bothers me and you're a fashion person yes they're wearing capri pants right now if i play for the Cavs, i don't care if it's lebron james and you are the goat junior I'm not wearing capri pants Mm -mm. for any man. I don't think that anyone at 6'10 under any circumstances should wear capri pants. Now, I get it. If you're 5'8 and 150 pounds, you might be able to rock that suit with the capri pants look. Mm -hmm. But 6'10, 250 pounds, that's just that's just not a good look. Curious of your thoughts, because the segments, you know, we're running out of time in the segment. Curious of your thoughts as a fashionista and literally a beauty pageant contestant and winner. I think they would have been okay if it was like a loafer shoe without the socks. Got it. Type of look. Not the boots, though. Not the, yeah, not the high above the ankle boot, or they're even like mid calf boots. Some of them go kind of high. And then, and then they they have the pants on and the pants are tapered at the bottom and stuff like that. But they almost could have got away. Some, some look a little better than, some look a little better than others, like as they're walking in. But, I feel like if they would have just had like a loafer, nice looking loafer, no socks, 
that would have been a better outcome. Yeah, I think you could go with the if you're gonna do. I still think if you're if you're six six or taller or two hundred pounds or heavier, you you can never do the capri yeah, pants. Yeah, it might it's stretch a little. It's stretching. But if you if you're smaller than that. You've you've got to go with the loafer. You yeah, can't go capri pant with the high with the high boot. No, that's never acceptable no. under under any circumstances. Right. And that's what our show is about. That's what we talk about. Um, you can get you can get the breakdown of the two three zone and the one three one trap from anywhere. But this is the type of stellar radio coverage that you get only on the Lance Day Radio Network. We'll be back after these messages. NBC Sports Radio.